Elizabeth Vargas. Tonight, the nation's illegal immigrants try to show America how essential they are by filling the streets instead of going to work. We'll measure the impact. Gas. From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Bob Woodruff and Elizabeth Vargas. Good evening. We begin with an economic show of force by America's illegal immigrants. Today, hundreds of thousands demonstrated around the country instead of going to work. In some areas, they also boycotted businesses. They wanted to show America how much the country and the economy depend on undocumented workers. Altogether, close to a million people took to the streets in more than 30 cities, and that number could still rise. It was the newest wave of protests against legislation that would increase the penalties for being in the U.S. illegally. Tonight, we have reports from around the country. We begin with ABC's Miguel Marquez in Los Angeles. They came by the hundreds of thousands from farming fields, from schools, from offices, and from construction sites. The crowds are just enormous. This one in downtown L.A., most of these people took off from work today, all to prove the point, they say, that Latinos and immigrants are united and that they mean something to this economy. Hazel Gonzalez is a small business owner. How much are you going to lose today by being down here? About a thousand, thousand. And you'll eat that? Huh? You'll eat that? You know, you know what? I don't need it. I'm not dying for hunger or anything. I mean, I'm here to back up everybody that's from Mexico that is illegal here. One thing that's different between this march and earlier protests is that this one is much more organized. These people are actually marching in specific groups. They're also raising money along the way. It's become a very emotional issue here in Los Angeles with the stakes high for both sides. I'm Dan Harris in New York City. There's some talk that turnout would be low today because there have been all these rumors about immigration officials cracking down on illegals here in the country. But that certainly was not the case at this protest in Queens. In fact, there were so many people that they couldn't keep the protest on the sidewalk. Decent Decent people spilled out into the streets. If you want something to happen, you have to make yourself be heard and seen. If you look back in history, I don't think a lot of people who wanted the things done ever followed the rules. If you look at the civil rights movement, nobody followed rules. America! God bless America! The protest was called for 12.16 p.m., a symbolic time because December 16th was the date when the House passed the bill that would make illegal immigrants felons. This is Dean Reynolds in Chicago where the police here say at least 400,000 people were on the march today. And while the crowd was predominantly Latino... We're here. We're not going back. There were pockets of Poles, Irishmen, Germans, and a few Senegalese as well. Organizers said most of the marchers here were legal immigrants, citizens by now, or those trying to be. Are you trying to get citizenship? That's what we're here. A fact they hope will resonate with lawmakers. One of the main slogans of this group today in Chicago is Hoy marchamos, mañana votamos. Today we march, tomorrow we vote. And today they had the look of a powerful political movement. Elizabeth? Dean Reynolds summing up our reports there. The point today was to make a point and to make an impact. Reporting on the economic impact for us tonight is ABC's Bill Weir. The 7th Street Produce Market churns with activity most Monday mornings. Not today. An army of hopeful laborers typically stands outside this Home Depot. You want to help? Today there was one. From malls in Atlanta to restaurants in Chicago, the sign was the same. Closed. Custom rubber products in Houston tried to adjust by staying open on Sunday, but production was down. And today, two of the 67 employees showed up. They will have a very big impact on my business if they decided to say, you know what, we're going to continue this uh, protest for some extended period of time. What you're talking about here is a temporary disturbance and one, of course, that the economy will immediately get over. Goya Foods chose to stop all deliveries, leaving over 300 trucks idle and 5 million products undelivered. Meatpacking giant Cargill gave 15,000 workers the day off and Tyson Foods shut down 12 of its plants across the country. 
While industry can adjust to a short, pre-planned boycott, this day shows how vital 7.5 million undocumented workers are to the national economy. They comprise 24% of all farm workers, 17% of those who clean, 14% of those who build. It's hard to envision how, how, the, uh, how these industries would keep going if, if uh, you know, 15 to 25 percent of the workers just disappeared. But not all workers felt the need to boycott. All 200 of dressmaker Lonnie Kane's employees are here out of loyalty, he says, and appreciation for above average wages and benefits. Was there anybody who came to you conflicted? who wanted to participate, who wanted to support the community, even if they are happy in this job. I think if you look around and you see a number of people in white t-shirts, they're expressing themselves. The reason they're here is to do this, okay. Um, if, if they want to become involved in activism, then that's another job. This is what activism looks like on Wilshire Boulevard at this hour. A scene that is certain to resonate politically, if not economically. And as Elizabeth, as far as the bottom line cost, one economist told me it's, it's like a one-day natural disaster without the reconstruction or cleanup. All right, Bill, we're reporting from the thick of it all. One man who left work to join a demonstration said it would be worth losing several jobs if it made it easier for illegal immigrants to get their working papers. ABC's John Quinones has the story of another man in San Antonio, Texas, who broke decades of tradition to make his own statement. Este es un día para estar feliz, todo mundo. Marco Salinas did something today he's never done before. He took a day off from work to join the March on Immigration. Usually, this is where you'll find Marcos, working in a little restaurant on the banks of the San Antonio River. I want a Marcos style, okay? Ten sirve patron margaritas, okay? This native of Mexico has been a waiter here for almost 30 years and says he's never missed a single day of work. 29 years and you right. never missed a no, day? Sir. No, sir. No. Except, you know, my, my vacation. A lot of people think that immigrants are taking jobs away from Americans. It's not true. The United States have a plenty of jobs. The Mexican national. He don't care what kind of work want to do. He don't care how many hours want to work. He only wanted to care the family. Marcos put his daughter through college, and his son is now the general manager of a brand new hotel. What did he teach you? Basically, you know, you gotta, there's nothing ever going to be given to you. You have to go out there and get it. It's an all-American success story. For me, I think this was one of the greatest countries to live. And that's why the man who's never missed a day of work was at the rally in solidarity. We are here. People living for five or seven years. <laughs> How you can send these people back? It's no way. His message to Washington? Touch the heart before making the decision. After the rally, it's back to work. Too many tables waiting for Marco Salinas. John Quinones, ABC News, San Antonio. The immigration debate to be continued, undoubtedly. To news